Hello and welcome to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Efraim Martinez. I am a principal in search of wisdom and I have found productivity to be a great tool for success. Today I have the great and distinguished honor of interviewing Spring Richardson Perry, who is a career transition coach and an organizational effectiveness professional with an unyielding passion for helping individuals and businesses thrive, she possesses a unique blend of expertise that empowers clients to navigate critical transitions and optimize their organizational performance. Spring Richardson Perry, who are you? Hi, thank you so much, Dr. Martinez, for that wonderful introduction. It is okay. so nice to be here. Tell me about uh, who who is Spring Richardson? So Spring Richardson Perry is a mom, an entrepreneur, a wife, a friend, a daughter, all those things. Um, not It's not just one thing that makes up who I am, but it's a bunch of different things. And so um, the things that, that I am most proud of of course, are my kids, my family, my husband. Um, but entrepreneurship is a part of that as well. And so, like you said, I'm a career transition coach as well as an organizational effectiveness professional. Beautiful. Thank you. I can't wait to learn more about you. So for the listeners and viewers of the show, can you please walk us through your professional trajectory up to this point? Absolutely. And so that is uh, very interesting. Um, so I initially went to school right after high school. I went to college and I just knew that I was going to be a nurse. So I started nursing school. Um, and actually the year I started um, college, I'm from New Orleans. It was 2005, the year Katrina hit. So yeah, so everything kind of um, got a little jumbled up for me. So um I started nursing school and when I got into the clinical side of it, I was like, I don't really like this. So I ended up switching majors, graduated in psychology and started out in healthcare to, to kind of in the administration to kind of see if I wanted to do that. Um, didn't really like it. Uh, got married, had my first baby and um, we moved to, we moved from New Orleans to San Antonio. So um, we moved to San Antonio. I started working in human resources. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and then I had another baby and I was like, okay, so now I need something that is going to be a little bit more flexible for me in terms of a schedule and um, wanting to really just be able to, to be more present for my kids at the time because they were really young. So... Um, switch gears into education. I've always been um, just very, very uh, inquisitive and always wanting to learn more. Um, and so teaching was just a logical next step for me. I had a great schedule, um, but also I loved to be able to teach people. I always used to play school when I was younger and I would be the teacher. And so my friends hated playing with me because they were like, <laughs> oh, she's going to give us all this work and we're not in real school. This is supposed to be play school. So I'm like, but I'm the teacher. So you have to listen to me. So, <laughs> so it was, um, so then in real life, I started teaching um, and I absolutely loved it, you know, but education took a, a hard turn during the pandemic. And um, so I exited and in 2021 and I became uh, an entrepreneur um, and so, you know, from, from teaching, I learned a lot, a lot of, a lot of resilience, um, a lot of perseverance, um, you know, a lot of things that I've learned in education, I've taken with me into entrepreneurship. And so here we are today. Wow. A couple of, uh, trying to unravel that onion. Uh, I also began my uh, professional trajectory in the healthcare industry. And um, to make a long story short, uh, even though I disliked it, 
I did learn something very important. That was the, the value of professional learning. I had to deliver sandwiches and mail to um, the area where they had the professional development. So sometimes I would stick in to eat a sandwich uh, and drink a, a soda and I would listen and I would see the esteem, the, how esteemly they treated each other and how they the, respected the, their professional areas. So I took that with me to education because us as educators are to, are to value uh, all this uh, professional learning and having guidance from someone uh, uh, and we should take it to a uh, step ahead. But do you remember any lesson that you may have brought with you when you left the healthcare system and went into the uh, human resources area? I learned a lot about people in general and really um, just respecting the person themselves because you don't know what is going on behind closed doors with people. And they may present to you one way and you may feel offended by that. However, I learned that that is not the way someone presents themselves to you is not necessarily a reflection of you because you don't know what they have going on inside their mind, you know, what they're dealing with personally. I learned that very quickly in healthcare because you know, you're bound by HIPAA laws, so you can't discuss someone else's health um, issues or anything like that. But when people were talking to me about the challenges that they were having and the things that they were going through, and, you know, they're like, my family just doesn't understand, and I don't want to tell them what's happening because I don't want to burden anybody with this. But, you know, I've been dealing with this on my own, and I know I've been difficult, um, but, you know, this... Th you know, they, they are trying to figure out how they're going to literally sometimes survive because there, you know, there's all different types of illnesses and things like that. Some, some can be terminal, some are fixable. It just depends on what the issue was. And so, you know, I really learned to take a step back and um, just listen to people and read between the lines and not necessarily, it's not always about what you say. Sometimes it's about what's not said and just being able to respect each person individually because we all have our own journey. We all have our own things that we're dealing with that nobody else knows about. So beautiful. You know, uh, like Steve Jobs says, life makes sense when you look behind or look back and you connect the dots and what you learn here makes you a better there. So it seems to me that that empathetic listening uh, is, a, is a superpower, a super valuable in the support of organizations. So when you pass through the education system and you have a different background than the traditional teacher who goes from college to teaching, you bring all this experience in the professional world. Um, what is your fondest memory as an educator? Oh, so many things. Um, I can tell you right now, my, um, my first class in middle school, they actually graduated this year. And that was, I was just like, Oh my gosh, my babies. Um, so that was a full circle moment for me this year when I was watching them um, thinking about when they got in middle school and how just, you know, those tween years, how that transitional phase, how that is. And then looking at how successful they are now in terms of high school and all the accomplishments that they had on their learning journey. I was so proud of them. Um, that That was a full circle moment for me. And then thinking also about me being um, cheerleading coach. I was a cheerleading coach. Uh, we had some really fun times in cheerleading. Um, so yeah, and I was in, so I was actually the founding cheerleader coach because at the school, this was the first cheerleading team that they had. So that was a really, really fun experience. Beautiful. And uh, then one day 
you spring forward. You decide to become an entrepreneur uh, for people that are in, in the trenches and people that are thinking of doing that and they see you as a, a person that she did it. I want to know what, what she learned. What advice would you give to people that are perhaps in education and want to make that leap uh, in having a, a different and perhaps wider impact uh, in others? I would say it is definitely doable and definitely possible. Um, I'm never going to try to convince someone to leave education because we need people there to educate our babies. However, if they've done the reflection and they've, you know, just at their wits end, I would say, and they're like, okay, it is time for a change. Um, I would say you definitely need someone to help you make that transition because it took me, even though I left in 2021, I had started trying to leave in 2019 and it took me two years to figure it out. Um, and so in a lot of, I hear a lot of educators have this same kind of thing happening to them. Like it, it takes them a while to get out when they're doing it on their own. When you have um, a coach that helps you through this, number one, they help you to identify your transferable skills in terms of what it is that you're trying to do next. Because I think that's the biggest thing with teachers is that in educators in general, it's like, I've known education all this time. I don't really know anything outside of that. So how do I make myself look like um, a really um, competitive candidate in another field? And so we talk about that, what your transferable skills are, what are some of the things that you've done in education? And a lot of times, you know, educators don't recognize how powerful their skills and experiences are because, you know, in the school building, you just got to get it done. So it's not, you don't really see it as being um, this really powerful skill or, or these powerful experiences. And so I really help them to just navigate that transition to say, okay, this is the experience that you had in the school building. This is how that translates into that next role. And this is what's really going to help you to stand out. And one of the things that I want to point out too, is that, you know, a lot of educators, they feel intimidated by this whole process um, because a lot of times they're just feeling deflated by the whole educational system uh, in general and in that moment. And so it, it just, they, they're kind of just at a loss in, in that moment. And so, like I said, it's always good to have someone who can walk with you on that journey because this is a life-changing moment, you know? Your career is what provides your lifestyle. It's what keeps a roof over your head. It's what put food puts food on the table for you and your family. And so it's just, it's not something that I take lightly at all. So. Thank you for sharing, Spring. Spring, as a, as a coach, um, I am very curious in, in you sharing perhaps um, who was your best coach, if you ever had one, I can't imagine that, that you did. Um, what made that coach uh, great? What did? What is one or two things that you took with from them to your own practice? So um, I have a business coach right now, uh, Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver, and she is absolutely amazing. Um, she has opened my eyes up to so much that I just wasn't aware of when it comes to business itself, because sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And so um, I'm always, always reading and learning different things, but she's had the experience. And so she can say, yes, this is what it says when you read about it, but this has been my experience with this actual thing. And so that has been what is what is super helpful to me. Um, and she's been an amazing coach um, for me this 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 whole year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Spring. So Spring, like in Back to the Future, 
if you could go back at any point of your professional career, what will the spring of today tell the spring of back then? I would say follow your heart and follow your dreams. Do not be afraid to step out on faith and just get it done, right? Because I think a lot of a lot of people want to make a different move, but they are afraid of the unknown. And that can be scary, but um, change is inevitable. And so when you think about it that way, if you step out and you give it your all, there's no way that you can't succeed. You might not see success as fast as you want to, but there's no way that you're not going to succeed if you stay consistent and um, just stay. My, my best thing is staying consistent and doing all the things, the little steps that lead up to those that big goal, those all matter. Beautiful consistency. Thank you so much. So spring, as you know, reading is such a luxury. If you have to have, we'll have to give two gifts for a loved one, and you will give one nonfiction book and one fiction book. Which books will those be and why? Okay, so my very favorite book of all time um, that was fiction is from middle school, The Giver. Um, I absolutely love that book because it um, it opened my eyes to um, so it, it was something different, right? Everybody in that book was the same because they were trying to achieve equality, but sameness is not equality. As we know in education, right? Equality means we are giving you access to be able to be successful on your terms. Excuse me. And so um, that book just really opened up my eyes to a lot of different things. So that's one fiction book that I would give. Um, nonfiction, I don't have a particular book in general, but it would be about astrology and like science stuff because I really love, um, I really love that. I love Greek and Roman mythology which is based on astrology. And so um, it would be something like that. Awesome. What what sign are you? I'm a Gemini. A Gemini. Okay. Thank you so much for shame. So uh, let me ask you, um, who is or who are your biggest influences? Oh, wow. So um, biggest influences, definitely my mom, my husband, and my coach, um, my mom, because she is a rock star. She is always there when I need her, even when I think I don't need her. She's there and she's like, you need me. And I'm like, you know what? I do. And so um, she's just her unwavering and non-judgmental support has been a game changer for me. Um, my husband as well, he has been so supportive um, on this entrepreneurial journey of mine. And he's been, um, he he's an entrepreneur himself. And so he has lots of advice and, you know, he's like, well, this is what I did and you can try this and see how it works for you. And so again, just that unwavering support has been um, so awesome for me. And then my coach, Dr. Avis, like I was telling you before, she's just opened my eyes up to so many different things um, that I would not have known um, not having her as my coach because um, I had a, a coach prior to her as well. And there were things that um, there were there are things that I've learned from Dr. Avis that I didn't learn from before. And so I'm super thankful to have this just this new vault of knowledge beautiful can you share with us at least one of the lessons so we have a a, a good idea of what exactly do you mean absolutely so um one of the things is <clears throat> is marketing right so you really have to not be afraid to put yourself out there and really talk about what it is that um 
the service, the product, whatever it is that you have to offer, um, you really need to not be afraid to put yourself out there. And so there's a level of branding that has to happen um, for you to sort of do that. And so she has kind of walked me through the marketing, the branding, um, and really being visible so that people know, okay, you're there, this is what you do, and speaking to that audience, not necessarily, um, you know, you tell them what you want to hear, but also you you tell them what you want them to hear, but also you need to tell them what they need to hear so that they understand how you can help them. So that's been a game changer. Marketing, uh, uh, definitely something that um, that is so important to 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 share your story. Um, can you share with us, uh, not necessarily about marketing, but any success story that you can share with us that you have experienced as a coach? Uh, so those people, again, they're aspiring. This is an education podcast, after all. Uh, but they might say, ah, that's what I want to do. Can you share <laughs> something with us? Absolutely. Um, so I had a client. She was in healthcare, and she had been trying to um, move up in her position. So not necessarily transition into a new role, but move up in her um, current role. And she had been, you know, trying everything. She had done some um, online leadership development courses, um, but she was still just kind of hitting a wall, hitting a wall. So I met with her, we talked, I wanted to understand you know, what experience that she had and how that would translate into um, a higher level role. And I redid her resume for her based on that experience. I created a, a cover letter for her based on that experience, just kind of, you know, exemplifying who she was at the core um, and how that really um, would be a good fit for that next level position. And then that experience that she had as well, translating that to show how that would be a good fit for the next level position. And in about three or four weeks, she got promoted. And so, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. and so she had been trying for a while prior to that. So, well, uh, I'm glad that services like your success because uh, many people just graduate from a program or from a degree, but they don't have the, the the those those skills that the coaches facilitate on how to think about something how to phrase something in a way that is uh, more conducive to the outcomes that we are uh, searching thank you so much for sharing uh, that spring let me ask you uh, all of us at some point believe that we might not be good enough not smart enough not as uh, important enough and and psychologists call this imposter syndrome. How do you address this feeling uh, that you may feel at some uh, points and what advice do you have to share? That is a great question, Dr. Martinez. And so I really wanna dig into this because I was fighting this um, just this year because, um, you know, I've, I've never considered myself a transition coach. I've always said, you know, I can help you redo your resume. I'll help you with your job search, you know, and I'll give you some tips on how to ace the interview and what you need to do. And so that was just me helping people, right? I'm not calling myself a career coach. I'm not, you know, oh, I'm not a coach. I don't do that. I just help you you know, I'll help you re redo your resume and I'll help you put your skills on there effectively. And then I'll tell you how to ace your interview. Well, <laughs> my coach was like, spring, that's coaching. What do you think you're doing? And I was like, I'm not a coach. Like, I don't like, you're amazing at what you do. Like, I don't do, like, I don't, I can't do what you do. She's like, that's not what I do because I'm not a career coach. I'm a business coach. You are helping people in their careers get to the next level, whatever that is for them, and that is coaching. And so it really, this is why I said my coach, you know, she's amazing. I had to take a step back to really look at what I was doing 
and to see from the outside in, um, you know, your spring, what are you talking about? You're not a coach. You are, this is, this is what coaches do. Um, so I, at that point, I was like, okay, if that is what I'm doing, then let's make this into, um, something that people can understand exactly what it is that I'm doing. So, um, that was my biggest thing with imposter syndrome just this year, <laughs> figuring out that, well, you kind of are a coach cause it's kind of what you already been doing, but you haven't been naming it that. So. Wow. Yeah. That, that transition from thinking we are something to believing that we are something right. And it gives up, gives our art much more value. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for sharing. Uh, before we continue, let's praise the Teach Better community. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get back to the episode. So Spring, as you know, uh, all successful people have productivity on top of their priorities. They know how to get organized and they're amazing with their calendars. Perhaps they double think, three, triple think when they send an email on what they are saying, what words they're using. Um, tell us what productivity means to you and how do you get organized and still have a fructiferous life? Oh, that is a question, Dr. Martinez. Um, productivity for me has shifted um, because I have I have a new baby girl. She is eight weeks. And so um, and, and then I have three older kids and then my husband and I, we have a blended family. So together we have nine kids. So productivity has shifted, especially with this new baby girl. Um, it is about setting, setting goals, setting short-term goals, setting long-term goals. So for instance, I'll make a to-do list each day and I will be realistic about this list. Like, okay, I need to do A, B, C, D and whichever one takes the longest, I'm going to start out with first to get that out of the way. And then once that's done, I'll start knock, knocking out the, the things that don't take as much time. And then if I don't get through it all in one day, that's okay. Cause there's always the next day and see, I would beat myself up, up, up about that part is like, Oh, you have to get everything done today. Mm -hmm. No, you don't make sure you're meeting your deadline. So you want to prioritize. Um, and one thing that helps me is to get up in the morning and to exercise, um, because it helps me to feel empowered so that I can power through the day to get the things that I need to get done. And especially now, since I have this little baby girl who I'm nursing, so I have to stop to feed her every so often, maybe every two to three hours. Um, it doesn't allow me to get as much work done. However, I would not change any of that. And I'm so thankful that I'm actually able to be home with her to do this because Um, the first three, I was home for like six weeks with them, six to eight weeks. And then they had to go to daycare and I went back to work. I was teaching at the time. And so um, I'm super thankful that I'm able to be with her and I'm looking at everything. I'm like, how was I even working full time? How was I doing all of that back then? You know, so productivity is what you make of it. Um, you want to make sure that you you know, you keep yourself organized in terms of understanding what it is you need to do um, and how quickly it needs to get done in terms of meeting deadlines and such things. Um, and then you do what empowers you at the beginning of the day so that you can um, have that energy to get through and do what you need to do, but also understanding it's okay to give yourself some grace and, um, allowing your body to rest when it needs to rest. That's such a great advice. Uh, it's not all work, but play too. Uh, geeky question. Um, what app do you use for 
uh, or or a what system? Maybe it's a paper system to use for your to do list and for your calendar. So I for my to do list I use pen and paper. <laughs> it works. It works absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It works. And then my calendar, I use Google Calendar because my business uses um, the Google platform. Um, so I use Google Calendar and it helps because I literally put everything on the calendar to keep me organized. Um, and so like if I forget something, it'll give me that notification on the calendar. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I got to go do this. So that really helps, too. And uh, your workout routine, what does it involve? So in the morning, I'm I'm usually up between four and five o'clock in the morning, every morning. Um, and that's, well, I feed the baby during that time, but I've always been an early riser. So I've always gotten up between that time. Um, so I will go for a walk. Me and the baby go for a walk. My husband comes too. He likes to walk with us. He'll ride his bike sometimes. And then um, we have a little gym in the garage. So I'll go in the garage and I'll work out um, total workout for about 45 minutes or so. Each day is like something different. I may do abs one day, arms one day, legs one day. Um, so my walk is maybe about 20 minutes. And then my workout itself is about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and then I get my day started after that. Fantastic. Uh, that's a, a, a great way to start the day with tons of energy. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Um, Spring, when you have to communicate, right, uh, uh, present to the people that you serve, um, what do you have any, any uh, ritual when you need to sit down and do some writing or preparing to present or communicate? Any advice or just something to share about what makes spring great? <laughs> oh, that's a loaded question. What makes me great? Um, well, when when it's time for me to like do something, I will like just before like just before coming on the podcast this morning, I will be in the mirror in the bathroom and I'll give myself a good look, a good talk. And I'm like, OK. You got this. And then just before I'll sit down for a, like a couple of minutes of quiet time just to kind of reflect and meditate, um, just to get my mind in a really good space. Um, and so that's how I really handle things. I love affirmations. And so just being able to um, look myself in the mirror and say, OK, spring, today you need to do this, this and this or OK, spring you are wonderful and you can get this done because there, there are days where I'm just not feeling it and I have to motivate myself some kind of way. And, you know, you have to have that intrinsic motivation. Um, but also my husband is a great motivator. If he sees I'm not feeling it, he'll be like, come on, babe, you got this. Let's go. Let's get it done. So he's in the office with me, cheering me on as well. Um, and that's super helpful too. So that, that's absolutely helpful having a um, um, a group of person or at least of two that can support each other uh, in moments of, of doubt. Um, and when spring is not being a full time mommy and full time everything else, uh, what do you do for fun? Um, I like to write in my journal and. Um, I love, okay, so this is really nerdy, but I love Marvel. So I like to watch some Marvel movies. Tell, tell me, uh, what is your favorite uh, Marvel character and why? Um, My favorite character is um, Captain Marvel or Marvel, as she says, um, because she really, um, you know, she had one belief and she gave that belief her all. But then when she realized that that was wrong, that maybe that wasn't the right way for her to go, you know, she worked to rectify it. And then she completely changed her way of being and her way of thinking based on this new information that she had. And to me, 
that is the essence of life, right? You know, if you're going to give something um, your energy, give it all of your energy. Um, you know, she thought that she was doing something good in the beginning with the Cree, but really the Cree were the bad people. And so when she realized that she she didn't have all of the information that she needed in the first place to know that Cree were bad. So when she realized that they were that they were actually the bad people, you know, she did everything that she could to rectify the things that she had done for the Cree that were bad. And then her belief system completely changed and she started working to do uh, good based on the new information that she had. And, and that's, to me, the essence of life. Wow. It's so empowering from the question of the favorite moral character. Thank you so much for sharing. Spring, this has been such a, a great time. Any last thoughts for the listeners and viewers of the show? Um, I would say a couple of things. Number one, if you are thinking about transitioning out of whatever career you're in, I would say do some research to learn, right? Be that be that lifelong learner to understand where you're coming from and what you're getting into. And then look for someone who can support you during that transition because um, it is it is going to be a journey. And um, as with everything, nothing stays the same. Everything, the only thing constant in this world is change. Um, but you want to make sure that you have someone that who has the experience and that you can trust to help you navigate those changes. Yes. And then I would say as a whole, um, you know, you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in you, you can't expect others to have that confidence in you. So believe in yourself because you can do it. When you put your mind to do something, you can get it done. And take that energy and really, really give it your all, whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, and I promise you good things will come from it. Wow. Great advice. Uh, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your productivity. Spring, uh, I hope that you have a fantastic day with your family. Thank you so much, Dr. Martinez. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Epaim Martinez. Chulu. And I love that production. Chulu out.